Hello Pisces and welcome to Intuitive Art Mediums. Thank you for joining me for your Astro Tarot reading for the new moon in Aquarius. Now this is a general reading for the Sun, Moon, Venus and or rising in Pisces. And this new moon in Aquarius occurs Thursday, February 11th, 2021 at 2.06 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so adjust to your time zone. This is also the same time that we have the Lunar New Year of the Ox. And uh, the new moon in Aquarius wants us to bring love into the situation. And there are lots of planets in Aquarius supporting that. However, we do have the moon going void course the same time that it conjuncts with the sun, which is what creates a new moon. Now the void of course moon is when it's just leaving Aquarius and goes to that in-between place between Aquarius and Pisces. And it's going to come into your sign Pisces early the next morning at 2.23 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, keep that in mind because there might be a little bit of a waiting period for you, Pisces, um, for you to really get this moon activation because I kind of see this new moon because it is a great time to put your uh, intentions into that seed, something that you want to begin. Um, it can be something that's important, that's part of a larger project that you're working on, or it could be something that you put up on the shelf and it's now calling you because it's ready to do some work on it. You, you've be, become inspired because we do have this moon conjuncting Mercury in Aquarius. So you might be... Uh, getting these new downloads of information or researching new information and um, a new understanding comes to you. And you're about believing. You're a dreamer, Pisces, and you're able to manifest some of your dreams. And we have Venus conjuncting Jupiter. Now keep in mind, Saturn is still there in Aquarius, having its influence, but it's not aspecting anything during this new moon. It's just kind of floating there. But this moon and Jupiter conjunction, they are a wonderful pair. They love to have fun together because we have Venus who loves beauty and art and pleasure. And then we have jovial Jupiter who loves to have fun and um, has the resources to have fun in the best possible way. And Venus, of course, is going to love that especially if Jupiter is going to indulge Venus. Now, this moon is also squaring Mars in Taurus. We still have Uranus there in Taurus um, that's been vibrating Taurus for quite some time now, and Mars wants its way. And Taurus is stubborn and is going to create some resistance but I think Mars, because Mars is going to be transiting and passing through this Taurus and eventually leave Taurus, um, I think Mars is going to leave its mark as it goes through Taurus. And again, we do have that moon coming into Pisces early the next morning. So... Let's check with the Star Seed Oracle to see what kind of higher information, what your higher guide, um, your higher self, you yourself might be a star seed. What information do they want to share with you at this time, Pisces?
that will help you through this new moon in Aquarius for Pisces. And we have lifting the veil, questioning everything. Anything unaligned must go. And that makes perfect sense because we have Pluto still in Capricorn who is going through and destroying everything that we cannot go back to. Anything that was a lie, anything where the truth is revealed, you cannot unknow the truth and the lies are going to crumble away. And that can be a worldly experience. It can be a personal experience. This can be an experience that you have at work, in love. Um, this, again, is a general reading. So apply that information to how it fits for you best, Pisces. But you are going to be coming into a greater awareness. Okay, and now because... We have all this lovely energy in Aquarius that is going to be influencing this moon as it's going through the void course. And I like to think of that void as kind of like the twilight zone, the magical place. Um, anything can happen, strange things. You know, there is a veil. We don't know. It's in the void. And here, Pisces, you're lifting that veil because you're deep enough. Pisces is the last water sign. It's the last. It rules the 12th house. You are the deepest. And you can go into these great depths. And you're going to know something before other people do because you're going to know it unconsciously and then it'll emerge in the surface for you, Pisces. Okay, so these are the I Ching of Love cards and love is a broad spectrum. Love, there's self-love. There is relationships, family, siblings, um, friends, closer than friends. Okay, and for you, Pisces, we start off with uniqueness, number 15. Again, Pisces, you are a very deep sign. You are going to see things uniquely, especially once you lift this veil. But you must have the courage to pull the veil across. Is your curiosity great enough to see what's there? Okay, next we have for you the spring, number 48. Okay, and it looks like a person carrying their seed, their intention their bubble of intention. And in you, because Pisces, you are, March 31st is when spring equinox occurs. And so the springtime is the perfect time for the gestation. So there is going to be a little bit of waiting. And perhaps part of this lifting of the veil is your seed lifting, cracking open that shell, that protective shell, and lifting itself up and then pushing its way out of the depths because, Pisces, you are the bottom of the sea. You are the abyss. You are that deep. And then you're pushing your way through this darkness, that void course of the moon, and then up to the light by the spring equinox. And in the spring, look, you have this flow of water. You're going to be in your season, Pisces. And wonderful things are going to happen. 
you're going to feel really good about what's going on, what it is that you're going to see your intentions growing in a beautiful, positive way. Okay, now let's check out the Island Time Wellness Oracle cards. To go a little bit deeper into this love energy. Okay, and here we have the Chaser. Chaser in codependent relationship. Fear of abandonment issue. Okay, that could be part of your uniqueness. You may have difficulty in being alone. Um, you may have issues that you have to deal with that keep people away from you. And again, this is a general reading. So um, sometimes we are in situations where we're not really in a position to be in a relationship and then if we are, it's with someone. And this could also be you helping somebody out. And you almost need to be needed, which creates this codependency. So this can go either way, Pisces. Um, you know, but we all want to feel like we're needed and loved. But we don't want to be in a relationship because we fear of being abandoned. So we need to look within ourselves. And this could be you lifting the veil and uh, questioning everything. And anything that's unaligned must go. And if this relationship is not in alignment with you, because yes, there are some times where we do enjoy helping someone to grow and become independent. This could be a temporary situation. And you might be drawn to them because they're a very unique individual and you might be inspired by them. Okay, then next we have, oh, look at this engagement ring. Engagement, partnership, Contentment, eternity, completion, union. Okay, to me, and this is the springtime. And to me, Pisces, this shows that um, you're going to take this relationship seriously. Perhaps this person grows out of this codependent relationship. Or again, you get married out of your fear of abandonment. You somehow feel that... Um, this might be your chance at having a relationship where you don't have to spend any more time alone and this person somehow makes you feel complete and you want that union and you're fine with them being dependent on you. And again, it might be something that you enjoy because in a way it gives you a sense of control over that person. The thing I'm going to say is, if this person is fearful of abandonment, don't use that fear against them. And vice versa, this person shouldn't use your fear of abandonment against you, saying, oh, I'll leave you or whatever. Um, but this relationship is going to grow. You somehow complement each other. You are learning from each other. And again, there is a uniqueness. And perhaps you're going to enjoy seeing how this person transforms and knowing that you're part of that. Now, this can also, again, be a work project that because some people do kind of get married and make a commitment to their work to their job because they know that if that won't abandon them, they will always be able to have that work, especially if it's something that they create themselves. But let's get in a little bit deeper with the tarot cards for you, Pisces. 
But if this is a relationship, this can be a beautiful relationship because again, there is this uniqueness and and perhaps this person is enlightening you or you're enlightening that person. And if there's that codependent relationship of, you know, like a teacher student, you know, a mentor protege kind of relationship, um, that might be what you need. So long as it's done with the proper intentions and not using this fear over holding that fear over someone. Okay, we have the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, I do feel that the project that you're working on is something that you put on the back shelf and now it's calling to you. The same way with this relationship. This could be someone that you were in a relationship with before, somebody that you would do work with, and perhaps you're working on this new pro or this old new project again, and it brings you together and you see each other in a different way now. This veil has been lifted. Okay, next we have the Queen of Cups. This is a water sign. This would be very complimentary to you, Pisces. Okay, and then we have the Knight of Cups. This is change, the instigator of change. But this could also be you wandering around emotionally. You might not want to get engaged, but the chaser wants to get engaged because they're afraid of abandonment. And so you might kind of um, wander away from that out of your fear or just that's not what you want. Okay, we have the eight of wands, which is communications. This is something that happens quickly. This is something that could happen very quickly, but you believe and you feel that it's right. Okay, next we have the Six of Pentacles with this Queen of Cups. This is a woman who has um, intuitive nature, especially when it comes to business. Uh, this is good karmic uh, benefits. This is the ability to give. This is also the ability to receive. Because sometimes it's easier to give than it is to receive. Next, we have the Seven of Wands. Now, to me, this is telling me that there might be some people that might not agree with this relationship or this project that you're working on. And the reason why I'm saying re adding relationship in there is because we have this chaser and this engagement ring. And I, I think that another aspect of this combination is that someone is chasing after you and they see what they like and they want to um, get into a committed relationship, which could be too soon. And you are protecting your position, whether you are telling people, no, 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 I believe that this is right. This is what I've been waiting for. This person's the one. Or it could be you defending yourself from the chaser. No, this is why I'm not ready for a relationship. So again, a general reading because you might avoid by making yourself busy with your work projects to avoid confrontation. Because Pisces doesn't like confrontation. You're very sensitive to vibrations. Okay, next we have the Four of Pentacles. Okay. This kind of goes with the energy of this chaser. You know, this is a codependent person. This is somebody who 
is fear of abandonment. So they're holding on to what they do have. And that's why they might want to jump into a more committed relationship. I'm not saying that this isn't going to be a positive relationship. I'm just saying there is that possibility that um, this person might be marrying you for what you have and not who you are. And it's leaving you emotionally unfulfilled. You have your uh, financial comforts, but you're emotionally unfulfilled. Okay, then we have the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, this is the complete opposite. This shows you completely fulfilled, but this also shows you are alone. You are self-reliant, and maybe part of the agreement to this engagement is that this person that is codependent who's working, perhaps this person is sincere in trying to be uh, self-reliant, self-fulfilled. They are just in need of uh, some financial resources or material resources to achieve this for themselves. Perhaps it's furthering their education um, or a business interest, something that they know um, that they can do on their own. And this helps build their self-confidence in who they are. And this too will help them evolve and grow. And perhaps then they become this self-sufficient independent person because they've evolved that you can then partnership with. But they're, they have to be in a position to do that. But you might help them with that. But again, this could be you, Pisces, where you decide to go it alone because you're okay alone. Okay, next. Oh, the Nine of Wands. Now you have to protect yourself. Okay, we have the Eight of Wands here and this emotional meandering. Okay, to me, this might seem like somebody might have wandered with uh, someone else. This could be you or the other person, especially if you're not in a committed relationship um, and you're just out dating. You might be dating several other people, but this one person wants you all to themselves, which is why they want to commit to you. And again, I see you or this other person, one of you, are not ready to commit to a relationship. One, you know, one, you're happy, you're content where you're at, you're fine working alone. And here, one of you are protecting your boundaries. It's like, no, and I just feel that, you know, there might be some communications. Uh, there might be some gossip here about your uh, past, your emotional past. And then last, we have the Two of Pentacles. Okay, so I immediately saw that. If you did get engaged and you did get married and this happened all too soon, this relationship would end and they get half. You are giving half of what you have to that person. And we kind of have this six of pentacles showing you giving, giving your dues, however you want to take that, however that applies, but somehow um, this could be a debt that you owe, this could be somebody who gave you the startup money to invest in your project, and now you're able 
to pay them back because you are now in a position where you are financially comfortable to do so and you're protected. Okay, just a couple more cards, Pisces, and we will conclude this reading and see how the universe has your back. How are you being um, comforted? How are you being supported by the universe? For Pisces, we have... True healing occurs when I give myself permission to feel whatever feelings live below the triggers. All right. This person could be triggering something within you. And now you're lifting the veil to see what lives below those triggers. And you'll be able to heal yourself from them because you'll have greater understanding of them. And by having greater understanding of your triggers, you will be able to better protect yourself. When I am connected to my joyful presence, I attract support from the universe. And yes, you do. This is the universe supporting you in whatever your endeavors are. And these seem to be financial endeavors and it's going to improve your finances uh, immensely, Pisces. Okay, Pisces, this is what I have for you. I hope that some of it helps you. Uh, again, take what resonates with you, leave the rest. And um, until next time, take care.